Crashing over the clouds and around the world Here comes the wild side of wildlife The Animal Show And now let's have a wild welcome for your furry friends Stinky and Shake Now it's the Animal Show Hello all you little animals out there I'm Stinky And I'm Jake And today we're going to meet two animals Oh, whoa Oh Jake, are you all right? Well, yeah, I'm okay. A sandbag fell, that's all. Well, Jake, you got to watch out for yourself. You're right, I will. Uh, uh, where was I? Oh, yes, uh, today we're going to meet two animals, the monitor lizard and the crocodile. And they both are covered with scales, and that gives them extra protection. Well, that's it, Jake. You need to be protected. I'm going to hire the monitor lizard or the crocodile to be your bodyguard. Oh, oh, oh. oh. and his first job will be to chop down that sandbag tree. Uh, excellent Gee. idea. Woo. And now it's time for... That's amazing! Yep. Today we look inside the mouth of a crocodile. Whoa. Oh, no, I'm not sticking my head in a crocodile's mouth. Sure you are. Come on. What? There they are. I'm trying the big toothy jaws of a crocodile. Mm. Did you know the crocodiles have 30 to 40 teeth in each jaw? That's all right. I'll take your word for it. And when a crocodile loses a tooth, it's replaced by a new one. A full-grown crocodile will replace its teeth as many as 45 times. Yeah, very interesting. Yay! <laughs> oh, I'm strong. I think that crocodile likes you. Yeah, for dinner. Come out of here. Forget about it, crack. The teeth of the mighty crocodile. Oh, another animal that scares the bejabbers out of me and will make you say... <gasps> That's amazing! Stinky, I do not need a bodyguard. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Okay. Well, why did you give in so quickly? Because otherwise we'd never get around to introducing our first guest. <laughs> and here he is from the tropical desert areas throughout Asia, Australia, and Africa. Africa. Vic, the monitor lizard. Hey, forget about it. I'm here. Which way do I go? This way, that way. <laughs> you two guys. <sighs> Here I am. Yeah, well, welcome to the show, Vic. Spanky, Jack, good to meet you. Uh, it's, uh, Stinky and Jake. Whatever. I hear one of you needs a bodyguard. One of the lizards are the best. Oh. I even bought some surveillance footage. Oh. Take a look. Oh. We monitor the lizards are very adaptable. Adaptable? What does that mean? It means we can live almost anywhere. The desert, the jungle, the trees in the water, you name it. Well, where is this? That's a termite mountain in Africa. And oh. that there is my cousin Luca. He sleeps with the termites. He lives in a termite mound? Sure. They make great nests, and the termites don't mind. And even if they did, who cares? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good sign, Jake. These monitor lizards are tougher than termites. Well, I'll be safe if I'm ever made of wood. Now, if you look closely, you can see that we monitor lizards are covered with scales. Uh -huh. They are very tough and offer great protection. Well, what are your scales made of? I don't usually tell anyone, but since you ask nice, oh. our scales are made of something called keratin. Uh, what's keratin? Boy, are you nosy. Uh -huh. Keratin is the same stuff that makes up claws and fur. Only on a monitor lizard, it's very thick. It's like armor. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Well, I also noticed that monitor lizards have a forked tongue, just like a snake. Very good, Jack. D Jake. Whatever. We do have a forked tongue, and that's not all we have in common with snakes. It is it? No, it is not. You see, just like snakes, monitor lizards swallow when we eat in one big bite. Ew. Well, my mom makes me chew 35 times before I swallow anything. Your mom is right. Always listen to your mother, kid. Yes, sir. But monitor lizards can't chew. Uh, you can't chew? Is different echo in here? Uh, no, sir. We can't chew because of the way our mouths are. So our mothers say it's okay for us to swallow food in one bite. I'll bet your mother is a sweet lizard. My ma is the best, and don't you ever forget it. <gasps> no, no, we never, no, never. We won't. <sighs> Good. Any more questions? Oh, yes, yes. I was wondering what monitor lizards eat. Polar bears. I'm kidding. Oh, oh. We eat whatever we can find. <laughs> if we live by the water like my buddy Fredo here, we eat fish. But generally speaking, we eat all kinds of small animals and birds. And if those small animals are too big, we can stretch oh. our jaws so they fit in our mouth. Oh, I think Fredo just found something to eat. Fredo was also an excellent fisherman. I did not know that. Pay attention. Ooh. 
you'll learn something. Okay. See how he stands there in the waterfall? He just waits for the river to bring another fish in. Bada bing. He's eating sushi. Is that beautiful or what? Ooh, you see, Jake? You'd be protected from termites and fish. Well, I feel safer already. And here's another little-known fact which I will share with you. We monitor lizards are so tough, we even eat crocodile eggs. Whoa, crocodiles must not like that. Oh, they most definitely do not. But they have trouble catching us. They do? We may not look it, but we're quick. And when we see a crocodile coming, we know enough to get out of there fast. So, I guess you could say that monitor lizards are masters of survival. That is definitely true, Jack. Jake. Yeah. In fact, we're one of the oldest living lizards of all time. Well, what does that mean? It means we've been around for thousands of years. And take it from me, you don't last that long without being able to adapt to any situation. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Vic, because I want you to be my bodyguard and move up to the Arctic. The Arctic? Forget about it. We monitor lizards do not like cold weather. Oh. Thanks, but no thanks. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta see some termites about a new house. See ya. <sighs> well, I'm sorry that didn't work out, Jack. Oh, that's okay, Spanky. Let's forget about it and watch Baby Talk. Children! Woohoo! Where are you? Ready or not, here I come. <laughs> We're over here, Mama. <laughs> yeah, just sitting in the sun. <laughs> oh, lovely. Well, if you get too hot, all you have to do is stick your tail in the water to cool down. See you soon. Really? Mm -hmm. Let me try that. Oh, oh yes, that's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, lovely. Oh. Thanks for the tip, Mama. Mother knows best. <laughs> Stinky, I've been thinking. I'm a polar bear. You just figured this out? No, I mean I'm big and strong. I don't need a bodyguard. Jake, you are soft and furry. If you were covered with scales, that would be a different story. <gasps> It'd be more than a story. It would be a song. Reporter, getting you answers to today's tough questions. Let's see if this animal knows the answer. Oh, me dear, Ma you'd like to talk to yes. me? Oh, I've well, never been chatted to Please before. let me ask How my question. Just a Which on, of yes, these oh, animals oh, has scales? Oh, yes. The pangolin, the butterfly, the gecko, or the giant tortoise? Oh, scales now then. Oh, did you know I have the foggiest idea? Now, Are feathers, I know all about feathers because I'm a man, bird, dear, you said. Ma'am, ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. Ma ma Trap door! No what's up. <laughs> Much better. Uh. And the answer is they all do, including the butterfly, which has scales on its wings. Now, let's take a look at the pangolin. Waterproof scales were developed when amphibians left the water to spend more time on land. These new reptiles needed something to protect their skin and to discourage predators. Scales were just the thing. You can see why this pangolin here needs his scales. I mean, look at what he's doing. 
Can you imagine having all those black tree ants crawling on you? And they bite, too. That's what he gets for trying to eat them. Still, they are his favorite food. So it's a good thing the pangolin's armor of overlapping scales and very thick skin helps to protect him. Ouch! His scales clearly don't protect him completely. This is Wonder Rat reporting on the pangolin. Now back to you, Stinky and Jake. And now it's time to bring out our second guest. All the way from the warm climates of Australia, Africa, New Guinea, India, America, and Cuba. Cuba. Please welcome Frankie the Crocodile. <laughs> hey, how are you? Oh, I've been so looking forward to meeting Mr. Stinky and Mr. Jake. And there they are. Oh, well, it's, it's great to have you on the show, Frankie. Oh, yeah. well, it's great to be here, Mr. Jake. Uh, you call me Jake. Oh, okay, Mr. Jake. <laughs> well, you're the tough, scary crocodile? Hey, don't let my manners fool you, Mr. Stinky. We crocodiles may look calm and slow moving, but we can be quick and fierce when we need to. Take a look at this. Oh. Oh, look yeah. at those teeth! Oh, yeah, they are rather sharp, aren't and, they? And so many of them! Yeah, our teeth are our greatest weapon. We got scales and we got a big tail. But when it comes to defending ourselves or hunting for food, our teeth do most of the work. What's that? Oh, it's just a close look at a crocodile eye. Our eyes are set high on our head. And so is our nose right there, see? Well, well, hey, Frankie, what's so important about the nose placement thing? Well, well, it lets us lie very low in the water, just like a log. And that means other animals can't see us when we sneak up on them. <laughs> I guess you have to sneak up on them. You sure don't move very fast. Hey, once again, Mr. Stinky, don't let appearances fool you. When we're trying to get away from danger or get close to our food, we can move quick as lightning. And when we're in the water, we can move even faster. We have webbed feet and a big tail that's perfect for swimming. Hey, come on in. The water's great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jake, maybe Frankie could swim along next to you when he's your bodyguard. Oh, uh, me? Mr. Jake's bodyguard? Yeah. Well, I'll think about it. I don't know if I got the time. You know, crocodiles are very busy. They'll like this mother crocodile here. What is she doing, making mud pies? <laughs> Not quite. She's digging a hole in the mud to lay her eggs. But they'll incubate there for three months until they're ready to hatch. Yeah, see, she lays as many as 90 eggs. And she spends a lot of time keeping an eye on those eggs. Why? Well, that's why. Say, isn't that a monitor lizard like Vic? It sure is. And just like Vic told you, Monitor lizards love crocodile eggs. Oh, yeah, but isn't that monitor lizard taking a chance? Oh, uh, you better believe it. You never know when that mother crocodile is going to swim back in to check up on her eggs. Ooh, See that? Wow. There she is. <laughs> Go get him, Gertie. Whoa. That's my neighbor Gertrude. She's a wonderful mother. Oh, I'll bet that monitor lizard will never be back. Well, then you'd lose that bet, Stinky. As soon as Gertrude leaves, he's back to steal some eggs. He must really want that egg to take a chance on being caught by a mother crocodile. Well, it's because they take them that Gertie lays so many eggs. And no matter how many get taken, some will survive. Okay, so you crocodiles can take care of eggs, but can you take care of polar bears? I do know that we crocodiles have been taking care of ourselves for 160 million years. <gasps> 160, 160 million, million years? years? Vic was right. There is an echo in here. You see, crocodiles have been around since the time of dinosaurs. Along with the alligator, we're the last of the ruling reptiles, a group of animals that once included dinosaurs. Oh, look, baby crocodiles. Oh. Yeah, oh. and Mom is coming to help them. Yeah, she's trying to help them. Uh, Shut up! Uh, wait, uh, wait a minute, she's what? not helping them. She's trying to eat them. No. Run, baby crocodiles, run. She's going to eat you. Stinky, what? no, no, Stinky, take it easy. That mother crocodile isn't eating the babies. Well, that's what it looks like to me. I know, but she's just putting them in her mouth so she can give them a ride down to the river. Oh, she is? Yeah. And once she's in the water, she opens her jaw, and the babies swim out and have some fun. <laughs> you see, Stinky, everything worked out fine. Those baby crocodiles are safe as can be. Yeah, Jake, I don't know. Maybe they're safe, but I don't like the idea of you riding around in Frankie's mouth. Hey, you and me both. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, Frankie, but you crocodiles are just a little too ferocious to be Jake's bodyguard. Well, I hope you're not too ferocious to sing a song. Hey, it would be my pleasure, Mr. Jake. Oh, good. And now here's Frankie singing the scale song. When you get old, your teeth fall out With telltale gray around your snout Your eyes go dim and hearing fails You've got problems, I've got scales Sure, I've got my teeth, it's true These teeth could make a mess of you about my teeth, there's many tales, but I don't care, cause I've got scales. Imagine if you had to chew a skin this tough, what would you do? Don't waste your time, it always fails, cause I've got skin as tough as nails. So even though I've got these teeth, it always feels a great relief. To know that if they all fell out, I'm safe of that, there is no doubt. <laughs> that was great, Frankie. Don't worry, Jake. We'll find somebody to protect you. Now, who should it be? <laughs> well, while Stinky thinks, let's see who won today's Animal Award. And now it's time for... Animal Awards. Today we find out which of these is the largest lizard? Big lizards. Who, hey, one of my favorite categories? Is it the Komodo dragon? Who, or is it the chameleon? Or the iguana? Mm-hmm. And the winner is... The Komodo dragon, which is a kind of monitor lizard and weighs around 130 pounds and is more than 10 feet Long. Yeah, that's a lot of lizard. Congratulations to the Komodo Dragon, today's Animal Award winner. Way to go there, big fella. Mm. Uh, Stinky. Uh, not now, Jake. I'm thinking. I can't be bothered. <laughs> not even for a story? Hmm? Oh, don't just sit there, Jake. Read. Yes, sir. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a little palmetto gecko called George. Now, one day, George decided he wanted to get rid of his skin. He'd had it for a while, and it was beginning to get worn out. So he started to take it off. But taking off his skin turned out to be hard work. While he was pulling it off, George got hungry. So he decided to take a bite of his old skin. And he discovered it was delicious. Lovely and chewy and chock full of protein. It was hard, hard work, but he knew it would be worth it. And before long, the old skin was gone, and George was covered in beautiful, brand new skin. And George and his new skin lived happily ever after the end. Hey, Jake, hmm? I've got it. Got what? I know who your bodyguard should be. <laughs> it's habitat time. <clears throat> Armstrong, uh -huh. what are you wearing? I'm wearing scales. What else? I'm never going on another trip without being protected, and scales are the best protection, so we're... Uh, where are we going today? The Luanga Valley in Zambia, Africa. Okay. Oh, ow, ow. Hurry up, I'm strong. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> hey, how do it get so wet out here? It usually rains from November to April. Parts of the valley all was flood. Whoa, hey. Well, I'm not so sure these scales are waterproof. And they won't do you any good here, Armstrong. This is a river. It's filled to bursting with water, see? Sometimes it rains so much that most of the entire valley is completely flooded. I can't believe this. Oh, yes. Right now, the water is running so fast from the floods that, that even that elephant is having a hard time climbing up the riverbank. Oh, hubba hubba, look at that bird there. It's a malachite kingfisher, Armstrong. Easy for you to say. Whoa, animal alert, another dangerous killer. I knew these scales would come in handy. Armstrong, huh? that's a marsh mongoose. Yeah. He's not interested in you or your scales. Look, he, he's trying to crack that shell. Another crocodile. Run, run, bunny, run. 
Okay, Armstrong. I'll run if you want me to. Oh, buddy, wait. Don't leave me here. I can't move. I think I've rusted. Oh. It's okay, Armstrong. I've got you. <laughs> oh. For habitat time, it's Bunny Bear. And I'm strong, the rusty chicken hawk. Just back from the Luangwa Valley. Over to you, Rhonda. <clears throat> Once again, I'm Rhonda Rat, rodent reporter, getting you answers to today's tough questions. Let's see if there's an animal who knows the answer. Ooh, no, oh, no, no, not you again. No, no, no. Yes, I don't know what happened Just before. Just let me ask my question, oh, please. Dear. Goodness Which me. of the following animals is not a true lizard? Yes, I is it yes. the green iguana, the tuatara, the crested iguana, or the Mauritius gecko? Which is the true lizard? Yes, the true lizard. Do I look like a no Ma lizard? No, I don't, Ma because I'm a magician. Trap door! <laughs> I nearly fell down the trap door again, didn't I? Do the second trap door! Second trap door. Ah! <laughs> Much better. The correct answer is the tuatara. The tuatara is not a true lizard because its jaw teeth are not separate, but actually part of the jawbone. This puts the tuatara in a class of its own. This is Rhonda Rat reporting on the tuatara. Now back to Stinky and Jake. Thanks, Rhonda. Uh, uh, well, I don't know exactly where Stinky went, but I do want to thank our special guests, Vic the Monitor Lizard and Frankie the Crocodile. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. And Jake, here I am, your brand new bodyguard. You're my bodyguard? Great idea, huh? See, I got my helmet, and I got my incredibly old riffers tail, oh. and this unwieldy club. Oh, 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 oh dear. Oh. Jake, are you all right? Oh. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, uh, remember, until next time, keep on seeing the world through the eyes of animals. <laughs> uh, well, uh, two, four, uh,